Legal arguments are getting underway right now in St. Paul in the appeal of Jesse Ventura's defamation case against the late American sniper author Chris Kyle. A jury awarded Ventura nearly $2 million judgment against Kyle's estate last year. The former governor accused Kyle of making up a story in the book about punching Ventura at a bar in 2006 for making offensive remarks about Navy SEALs. Attorneys for Kyle argue the trial judge gave the jury bad instructions on determining whether Kyle was guilty of actual malice. We are learning more about what happened before an Aitken County Sheriff's investigator was killed on the job. 60-year-old investigator Steven Sandberg was shot to death Sunday morning while guarding a 50-year-old patient at St. Cloud Hospital. Authorities say Danny Hammond was recovering from a suicide attempt. They say he somehow grabbed Sandberg's gun and shot and killed the investigator. Hammond was tasered and eventually died from a likely cardiac arrest. Yesterday, a motorcade escorted investigator Sandberg's body from the Ramsey County Medical Examiner's Office in St. Paul all the way back to his hometown. Hundreds of people lined the streets as that motorcade passed by. Firefighters saluted the procession of vehicles, which included Sandberg's wife, Christy, their daughter. The community also came together for a candlelight vigil outside a church in Aitken. It's, just, it's so senseless. I just don't know what to say. We grew up in a small community, and we love this community because we're so close. And when you lose someone, it's not just a police officer, it's not just a neighbor, it's a member of your family. I can't imagine losing such a wonderful man. He was the sweetest, nicest man you ever knew. I, I just, I don't even know what to say that can pull this town back together after this tragedy. The funeral for investigator Sandberg will be held this Friday. We've also learned more about why Danny Hammond was in the hospital on Sunday. Deputies say he tried to commit suicide after first threatening to kill his wife. According to court documents about a week ago, Hammond's wife told him she didn't love him and she was leaving him. Prosecutors say Hammond then locked them inside, holding her at gunpoint until she was able to convince him to let her go. She went to her father's house. He called 911. Hammond was facing 11 felony charges in connection with tormenting his wife. He was rushed to the hospital after deputies found him nearly dead from a suicide attempt. Hammond did die after a hospital security officer tasered him. Stay with WCCO for continuing coverage on this tragic story as the community says goodbye to Investigator Sandberg. Former President Jimmy Carter and current Vice President Joe Biden are headlining a tribute to Walter Mondale in Washington. It's honoring Mondale's work as a U.S. Senator and former Vice President. It will highlight Mondale's achievements in education, civil rights, foreign policy, and national security. As you know, uh, Minnesotans aren't supposed to brag, so it's uncomfortable to me. Many U.S. Senators will be there for Mondale's tribute, including Minnesota's Amy Klobuchar and Al Franken. If you park on the streets of Minneapolis, keep your eyes open for street sweeping signs. Starting today, Minneapolis crews start that uh, curb to curb sweeping, oh, yes. leaf collection throughout the city. Uh, they do this to keep our waterways clean, keep all the leaves and all the dust and all that junk out of the sewers. Uh, it takes about four weeks. Includes 1,100 miles of city streets. You'll see those no parking signs posted at least 24 hours in advance. Cities can use Facebook and Twitter to post updates, but uh, parking will be prohibited from 7 in the morning till 4:30 in the afternoon on streets being clean. So if you don't move your car, you're going to be ticketed. You'll probably be towed. Oh. So pay attention.